glad that we're having this hearing. I'm, I'm super appreciative of the leadership of our chairwoman, of at least having some sort of transparency on exactly what happened. As we all know, the wealthiest 10% own 84% of all stocks. In fact, 50% of American families own no stock at all. I say this to emphasize that to many of my residents, the stock market is a simply a, a casino for the rich whose gambling hurts pension and retirement funds. And when you all screw up, the people end up paying the tab through losses or bailouts. So I wanna talk about the high frequency trading. We know about half of all stock trading in the US is done by computers. They analyze market activity and instantly complete trades at a profit. So this high frequency trading allows Wall Street traders to get ahead of transactions done by pension accounts and retirement funds. So Mr. Griffin, and this truly is a yes or no question. <laughs> Please. Is Citadel's trading algorithm programmed to identify and trade ahead of large trades done by pension and retirement funds? Yes or no? Congresswoman, today, virtually all trades executed by institutional investors are in the form of program trades such as VWAP and other algorithm trades. So that's a yes, right, Mr. Griffin? Just no, so it's clear. I, I'm answering the question. It's a very complex question that deserves an appropriate level of answer. Okay. These VWAP trades are not large trades that you can, it's not like there's 10 million shares about to be bought. It is a trade that is sliced into small slices, 100 or 200 shares, and yeah. executed over the course of a day, a week, or a month. Well, help me out with this one. Does this increase cost? this kind of algorithm or whatever uh, program to identify uh, and, and trade, you know, the computers doing the training, does this increase costs for people who have pension and retirement funds, yes or no? So given that we, for example, manage money on behalf of pension. Oh, well, I just, I really, because they're so timed, this is not out of disrespect. So we're just got a limited we, time. We use, we use VWAP orders to execute on behalf of our hedge fund and have yes. generated exceptional returns for pension plans and for endowments. So. Well, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out, Mr. Griffin. In effect, some estimates indicate that as a result of the high frequency trading, though, pension and retirement accounts pay nearly $5 billion in a tax. This means that Wall Street firms like yours engaging in high frequency trades are actually making money at the expense of my residents' retirement funds. So one way to ensure that this enormous wealth generated on Wall Street actually reaches the real economy, y'all, you know, what's happening right here in our communities and in my district is to enact and look at proposals like a financial tra transaction tax. And let me tell you, according to recent polling, the majority of Americans, all of you need to hear this, and it's going to grow, the majority of Americans support taxing Wall Street uh, transactions. Taxing them at just 0.1% would actually raise $800 billion over 10 years, which could fund programs like helping my district expand health care, nutrition, public education. I heard my friend from Texas, who we all are praying all the families will be taken care of, talk about access to water and electricity. But guess what? Right now in my community, it's so poor that I have families melting snow so they can flush their toilets because they have no access to water. So. This tax to me would discourage risky and high frequency trading, unfair high frequency trading. Mr. Griffin, does Citadel's lobbyist right now been hired to oppose federal proposals to uh, financial transaction tax because it would make high frequency trading less profitable? So we firmly believe that a transaction tax will injure Americans hoping to save the retirement. Yeah. I believe that Vanguard has publicly come out and said that we'd have to work about two and a half years. Well, later. I want to make this. And yeah, I, to finish oh, my I, want to... I think it's, it's important. Oh, no, no, I'm reclaiming my time. The <laughs> Hong Kong stock market, Mr. No, no, Griffin, stop talking. imposes 0.2% tax on transactions as a result and sees little high frequency trading. But this hasn't stopped the Hong Kong stock market from thriving or becoming the la third largest in the world after New York and London. So. And just to be clear, let's not gaslight the American people. Yes. We'll all be fine with the tax. And it's fair because let me tell you, our folks are, are tired of bailing you all out when you screw up and gamble with the retirement fund. And that's exactly what happens every single moment. And that's the reason why we're having this hearing is 
because sometimes you are irresponsible and it's set up in a way that helps only the wealthy and leaves people like my community here with this large income inequality that I feel like never ever gets the bailout it deserves. Thank you so much. I yield. She yields him into the ground. Oh my God. He's <laughs> got a bunch of random crumbs Thank on Thank you me. very much. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll go to Ms. Ocasio-Cortez for five yeah! minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. It's happening! Um, Mr. Tenev, Robin Hood has engaged in a track record of outages, design failures, and most recently what appears to be a failure to properly account for your own internal risk. You've previously tried to blame clearing houses for your need um, and scramble to raise some $3.4 billion in a matter of days, but you've also you know, blamed a lack of industry-wide real-time settlement, uh, or rather a lack of that uh, settlement of trades. Um, you know, but Robinhood's requirements for margin have long been far more lax than other brokers for a long time with you know, in December, just a couple months ago, you bragged about having some of the most competitive rates in the industry. And this is evidenced by your recent decision to raise those requirements. Uh, when Robin Hood prohibited its customers from purchasing additional shares of several stocks, other brokerage, brokerages merely adjusted the margin requirements on these stocks. Uh, so Mr. Tenev, given Robin Hood's track record, isn't it possible that the issue is not clearing houses, but the fact that you simply didn't manage your own book or failed to appropriately manage your own margin rules or failed to manage your own internal risks? Oof. Wow. Thank you for this question, Congresswoman. Uh, let me address the margin point because I think this is an important one that has been um, under discussed. So in December, when we lowered our margin rates to 2.5%, one of the details that I think was missed is that most other brokerages have tiered margin rates where the wealthier customers pay much lower margin rates than lower net worth customers. So you'll have someone that has $10,000 paying 9 to 10% for margin, whereas someone with a million dollars pays 2%. So our approach was give everyone a uniform rate so that wealthier customers are not advantaged uh, with lower rates than than lower income customers. And I think that's a unique approach in our industry and is representative. Thank you, I ha have to apologize. I have to reclaim my time for questioning. Um, you know, as many of my colleagues have also pointed out, Robinhood generates much of its revenue from the payment for order flow arrangements with market makers like Citadel, um, as well as Two Sigma and Virtue. And in 2016, the SEC highlighted ways that the payment for order flow qu created a quote, potential conflict of interest with a broker's duty of best execution. And then one of the ideas that the commission floated in 2016 for addressing these conflicts of interest was to require that brokers pass on the proceeds of a payment for order flow. Now, um, earlier, one of my colleagues, uh, San, uh, Representative San Nicolas, said that uh, Robinhood owes its customers a lot more than an apology. And I happen to agree with him. I believe that the decisions made by you and this company have harmed your cons your customers. And um, Mr. Tenev, would you be willing to commit today to voluntarily pass on the proceeds of the payment for order flow to Robinhood customers? Congresswoman, I, I appreciate that question. When, uh, when the statement you referred to was made, uh, I believe 2015 or 2016, it was before Robinhood forced the entire industry to drop commissions and replicate our business model, which made payment. So is that a, 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 I should take that as a no, you're not willing <laughs> to pass on the proceeds of payment for order flow to your customers? When when uh, the other brokers dropped- no, I'm just talking about today, right now. Payment for order flow, Congresswoman, allows for commission-free trading. In the mm -hmm. context of trading commissions, um, it's a much larger source of revenue in the past than payment. Mr. Tenef, I, I apologize, and it's I I don't want to be rude. I just have limited time. Um, but if removing the revenues that you make from a payment for order flow uh, would cause the removal of free commissions, doesn't that mean that trading on Robinhood isn't actually free to begin with? Ooh. Because you're just hiding the cost, the cost in terms of potentially poor execution or the cost of lost rebates to your customers. Oh. 
So certainly, Congresswoman, Robinhood is a for-profit business and needs to generate some revenue to, to, to pay for the costs of running this business. People were initially skeptical that the model, even with payment for order flow, would work when you remove the commissions. And I think we've proven that otherwise by making this the standard model by which brokerages operate now. I see. Okay, Mr. Tennant, I have to I have to move on very quickly. I have a, a timeline question here uh, for Mr. Plotkin. I see that um, you know it, earlier your testimony today was that. Hello. Oh, you're out of time. Earlier, I, I um, your testimony today was that uh, Melvin Capital had not engaged in. Um, oh, I see. Oh, that. sorry, M Madam Chairwoman. I'm sorry. I think I think you're not muted. <laughs> sorry about that, uh, Mr. Plotkin. Earlier today, you know, you mentioned that Melvin Capital had not engaged um, in a naked short of GameStop, and Melvin closed out its position on GME I'm on the twenty. Correct. I'm sorry. The gentle lady's time has inspired. Oh. But we have to go to Mr. Archon Claus for five well, minutes. Well, oh, that doesn't fix GameStop. I don't know what will. Thank you.